Joker, snowshoes from some mail order novelty house. Winter Carnival yet. Let me tell you a little about what we have planned. First of all, you may compete in as many of the events as you've a mind to. We've got cross-country skiing, snowmobiling, dog sled racing, and every variety of alpine skiing. Downhill, slalom, and freestyle skiing. It's what we used to call hot dogging. But uh, you hot doggers will be judged on grace and originality, not on your audacity. There's Billy Joe, the snow queen. Billy Joe! Mr. Rillin, can I help you, Buster? Come on, Charlie. No. Uh, Tony, uh, could you come out here a second? Buster Smith wants to talk to you. Uh, Hi, Buster. What can I do for you? Mr. Rillin, can I talk to you a moment in sure. private? Sure. I am so pleased you remembered, Betty Jo, even though your mother's too young to remember, that I was the very first queen of our very first winter carnival. But I was only 16. That was, uh, 50 years ago. Charlie Baraka. Tony, this is a fine time to be going skiing. Uh, hardly, Grandma. We have a little problem. The manager takes care of big problems, which we don't have at Real Lodge. No, no big problems here, Grandma. Things because he's my grandson, he can treat me as if I were his grandmother. Heidi? 
Heidi, can you explain to me exactly where... You won't where... believe me either. Nobody will ever believe me. Well, what's more important, finding your friend or trying to convince us that there's some kind of monster out there? There is. I saw its footprints. I heard it. And it's got Jennifer. And all anybody's doing around here is staring at me like I'm crazy. Nobody thinks you're crazy. The problem is the patrolmen haven't been able to find Jennifer yet. In fact, they can't even find your tracks. So you're going to have to get a hold of yourself and take us back out there again. And... I'm not going back. Please, don't ask me to. Please, I can't. Okay, okay. But you can describe the spot, can't you? No. Oh, the only thing I can remember are those footprints. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, oh. What am I going to tell Jennifer's parents? They always expect me to keep an eye on her. I'm going to call him right now. Uh, no, no, no. Don't worry them unnecessarily like that. We're going to find Jennifer, I promise you. Let's get back to the lodge and get yourself warmed up. I'll have Buster drive you down. Hey, try not to worry, okay? We're going to find her, I'm telling you. We passed an old barn, off by itself, near a stream. Good girl. Take her down to the lodge, have my grandmother keep an eye on her. I'd hate to have our guests or anybody at Carnival hear that kind of story. From any of us, huh? Let's split up, see what we can find. We'll meet back at the lodge in a half hour. Let's go. your autograph, Mr. Seabird? You gave my father one at the 68 Winter Olympics, but then when you won that gold medal, he sold it. He did? <laughs> what did he get for it? Don't tell him. Let him keep his illusions. Thank you. Will you be staying for the whole Winter Carnival? I think so. That's just great. Well, thank you.
Well, it's nice to feel wanted somewhere. Coming? I think he did. Perhaps he's got something more important to do right now. No. Good old Tony knows I'm going to ask him for a job. How could he know that? He hasn't heard from you in ages. Well, yeah, you were right. Coming up here was a dumb idea. I never said it was a dumb idea. I just said you might be better off looking for work outside the ski business. This is all I know how to do. You know what I think, Gar? You don't really want a job. This is just an excuse to back out and still feel right about it. This wasn't an animal. And it wasn't human either. It certainly narrows it down. Did the other men see it? I don't think so. You didn't ask them? If they'd have seen it, they'd have told me. They thought Heidi was imagining things. They couldn't possibly think that of you. One word from you, it'd be all over town in a minute. Oh, it's a fine time to have a panic just before our winter carnival. I'm not hiding anything. I didn't tell the men because I wanted to get them out of the area as quick as I could. Not because you have a vested interest in the future of this resort. Grandma, I'm gonna try to spell it out for you very simple. There's something very strange and very dangerous out there. And if I thought it would stay up there, fine. We could designate the area avalanche prone and just seal it off. Well, if it were going to come any nearer, wouldn't it have done so by now? What do you base that on? You don't know anything about it. I mean, you don't know how long it's been up there. When it got there, it could have got there last night. Just in time for the winter carnival. What are you being so facetious about? For heaven's sake, what do you want us to do? Report it to Sheriff Paraday immediately. Report what to Sheriff Paraday? Can you hear yourself describing what you saw, what you thought you saw? Tony, we need this carnival. It's what keeps the tourists coming here all year round. The whole town needs it. I know all that. Well, then, let's just hold our fire until the carnival is over. I agree with you. Let's designate the area restricted. Tell the maintenance crew to put up a slew of signs. And what do you tell Jennifer's parents? Tony, I... I'm not being insensitive. Just realistic. You know what I think? I think it was an avalanche. Bodies do disappear in avalanches, you know. Are you forgetting about Heidi? I'm, I'm not worried about Heidi. And I certainly don't have to worry about you, Tony. Do I? After all, you are my grandson. Okay, Sheriff Parody for me. Oh, all right. Gar, Ellen. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to keep running. Uh, crisis. Well, you two look great. Does he uh, still wear his gold medals to bed? <laughs> Listen, I'm still running. Let's get together, have a drink later on, and uh, confess everything. And I've forgotten how beautiful you are. You always were the winner. I need a job, Tony. Not anymore, you don't. Real, I 
heard you didn't find the girl. You want me to go Where up there? Where have you been? With Heidi? Yeah. I wish you. Hey, your grandmother had the doctor give her something. Put her out for a while. She was in pretty bad shock. Look, Mr. Rill, I'm supposed to have the rest of the day off. But I got a pretty good idea where the girl is up there on that mountain. If it's all right with you, I'd like to take a couple of patrollers up there, look around, see what I can find. No, and that's an order. May I ask why? Because I don't want anybody up there. I want the area posted. You get a hold of Ben Cochran and maintenance, you tell them to get ready to put a lot of signs up there. Yes, sir. Saying what? What? How do you want the signs to read? Restricted area. <laughs>
John, where are you going? What's the matter, son? What's the matter? Speak up. Inside. The water truck. Superstar. Your grandmother decided that a living legend is just what this place needs. Hmm. Uh, may I have some coffee, please? Would you like some more tea, Mrs. Seabury? Yes, thank you, Mr. Real. Tea. What is it, Tommy? Oh, the pressures. Comes with, uh... Inheriting all this. Hmm. I must tell you, I'm very impressed. You really built this into something. Why, thank you. Thank you for giving Gar a job. That's all in our favor. But he told me he had a hard time getting you up here. How come? Well, I only get two weeks off a year, you know, and I had my heart set on a warm climate. Hmm. And I, I was afraid of seeing you again. <sighs> After all this time, everything we had. What did you think would happen? I don't know. I've been having a lot of fantasies about you for the last year. <laughs> fantasies about me? Good or bad? Not bad. A friend of mine, a doctor, said that uh, when a woman starts having fantasies about the man she didn't marry, she's not getting enough realities from the man she did. Hmm. I think your friend is talking to you about sexual realities, and you're not. Reality is the problem. You know, Tony, if I were an archaeologist or something, it wouldn't be so bad. But I'm a reporter. Television is all here and now. It's exciting, it's challenging, it's stimulating. That's where I am all day. Then I go home to Gar. And it's the winter of 68. That's where he is. How long has he been like that? Do you know that he hasn't been up on his ski since he won the gold medals? That's incredible. Oh. Maybe coming up here will change all that. Not his fault entirely. 25% of the world watched him win those medals. The president called him. He was on magazine covers. He did television commercials. Mm -hmm. He was a hero for an instant. And whatever it takes to go back to being an ordinary mortal, 
car doesn't have it. It's, it's really a form of paralysis. Well, as I see the problem, Doctor, you're still in love with the man. If only I could fall out of love with him, it'd be so much easier. You know, marriage can survive a lot of things. But it can't survive lack of respect. And I've lost about all the respect I ever had for him. I need a nap. Wait a minute. You know what you need? You need to have someone say he loves you. And I do, you know. I always have. I saw that, you know. Kissing my wife and puppy. Hey, um. Guess who's been elected to Crown Queen Betty Joe? Yours truly. Did I? Mm -hmm. Gar, are you still a good marksman? You mean on the rifle range? No, not necessarily. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, whatever I tell you, you'd have to promise me not to repeat it to anybody. Okay. You're serious, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Not even Ellen? Especially Ellen. Why especially Ellen? Because she's a news person. Okay. Tony! Uh Meet me in an hour at the swimming pool, okay? Okay. Better take the boy home now, Mr. Cochran. I appreciate your help. Yeah. Okay, sure. Thanks, Something that's troubling you, Tony. Why don't you tell me what it is? You remember a news story a few months back? Uh, um, some hikers claimed that one of their party, a young girl, was carried off by a 12-foot hairy monster? Yeah, Bigfoot. You believe in such a creature? I really don't know. But you know, they say that there are hundreds of them roaming around all over the country. Who says? Lots of people. Right after that story broke, Helen did a special on the Bigfoot controversy. So she traveled all over the country, interviewed dozens of people who supposedly had seen one of them. Has one of them been seen around here? Is that what your crisis is all about? Well, I saw something, Gar. It was monstrous. And it wasn't an animal. And it wasn't human either. <laughs> And now you find that you're too rational and too realistic to allow yourself to believe it was something else. Is that it? A uh, little bit of all that. And that's why you hired me to go out and blow its brains out, right? Talk about friendship. Give it a something else. I didn't give you a job as a hired killer, Dor. Of course not. You were only thinking of this town that you love so very much. You're damn right I am. That thing is dangerous, Gar. A thing. Just because it doesn't look like you or me makes it a thing. And then it's all right to go out and kill it in cold blood, right? And how do you know it's dangerous? Everyone who's ever been in contact with one says exactly the same thing. 
It stares at you for a few seconds. And then it disappears again into the wilderness. Except when it feels like carrying off a young girl. That story turned out to be a hoax. I'm not talking about that story. I'm talking about one of our guests. I found her jacket the other day. It looked like it had been ripped off her body and it was blood-stained, and I believe that thing killed her. Have you seen my husband? No, Ellen, I haven't. Jimmy, are you looking for me? No. Uh, Sheriff Paraday needs to see Tony right away. You have any idea where he might be? No, I haven't. <laughs> well, Ellen, it seems as if both our men are missing. Something wrong? Nothing you want to hear about. And look, I got to get right back out there. As soon as he shows up, will you tell him the sheriff wants him to come right out to the old Fairchild farm? I went out to the real lodge. They don't know where Tony is. I talked to Mrs. Real. Told her as soon as he shows up, send him out here right away. Okay. Can you make anything of this? Come on, we gotta get to the barn. The sheriff's waiting for us.
I got here as fast as I could. Scar Seberg, our new ski school director. Sheriff Faraday, what's up? Well, I think we found that missing girl. Where? Cochran's boy found her inside, dead. I understand she was a guest at the lodge. I was hoping you could help me identify her. Well, I must have seen her somewhere. Maybe I'll recognize her when I see her face. She doesn't have one. Pretty obvious she wasn't murdered. Only human beings commit murder, and whatever did that wasn't even halfway human. What do you think, Tony? Uh, can you help me? Is that her? Yes, sir. What do you base that on? Color of her suit. Well, how would you know the color of her clothes? It matches the jacket I found. You found the jacket where? On the north slope. We were looking for her up there yesterday. Her friend thought she might have had an accident. So the patrollers told me, but they didn't say anything about a jack. We spread out in different directions, Cole. But you came together again. That's right. So why didn't you show them the jacket? What? Why didn't you show them the jacket, Tony? I left it where I found it, as a marker. Is that what you want to talk to me about? That's right. I wanted to see you about it first. I didn't want to put the town in a panic. And what about this stuff uh, Heidi told the patrol about a monster? Heidi only saw the footprints. I saw the thing itself. All right, tell me about it. I can certainly understand your grandmother not wanting any of this to get out. You know, she may be right about it being a grizzly. Winter attacks are not all that rare, you know. Cole, it's not a grizzly. What do you think it is? Gar thinks it's one of those legendary creatures called Bigfoot. That's right. The legends I've heard about Bigfoot putting pretty firmly in the Pacific Northwest. Not necessarily, Sheriff. Ellen tells me there. There are hundreds of them roaming around all over the country. Ellen? Oh. My wife. She's a TV journalist. And a while back, she did a special on the Bigfoot controversy. Did they settle anything? Nah. Not what you, a sheriff, would consider hard evidence. But she did run across a couple of interesting points. She went up to Washington State and met with an anthropologist. He showed her, oh, I think she said, 150 photographs, hand and footprints of so-called Bigfoots. Now, if you want to know more about it, I suggest you go and talk to Ellen.
Whatever did that to that girl, the less people would get in its way, the more was going to stay alive. Right. So we're going to say that the girl was mauled to death by a crazed grizzly out of hibernation. And that's the story I'd like for you to tell your wife, Mr. Seabird. All right, Sheriff. I will. For now, that is. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, when it gets daylight, I'd like for the three of us to sneak out here, track that thing down, and kill it. We just lost Mr. Seberg. No, you didn't, Sheriff. Whatever did that to that girl in there just got to be destroyed. Fine. wasn't even 20. To think that something like that could happen to her. Mauled to death by a grizzly, mm -hmm. and in the dead of winter. Come on, Doug, you can't believe that. Something else happened to that girl. Personally, I'm scared, and I'm leaving. Where in the world have you been? We've been calling all over town for you. Well, what, what's wrong? You were supposed to be at the high school auditorium over an hour ago. Oh. Tony, will you go to the airport? I had to notify that poor girl's parents. They're due in any minute. What'd you tell them, Grandma? Nothing. Except that you'd be there to meet them. Come on. Imagining how that poor Betty Jo, it's carnival time, and you're the queen.
Are you all right? Sorry, go ahead. Did you see it? Did you see it? right. I should have let him report it. But we had to have our winter carnival. It was our 50th. I guarantee you, it'll continue for the next 50 years. Now, you take care of yourself, all right? And then uh, I'll take care of this one. Thank you. Still can't get a hold of Tony. Seems to be a lot of hysteria back at the lodge. Bad news travels fast. You better let me drive you back, Mr. Seabird. Don't worry about the car. I'll have one of my deputies take care of it. My wife's probably worrying about you. Appreciate it. Well, you sure picked a bad time to go to work for real lodge. Yep. What are you going to do next? Well, as soon as it's daylight, I'm going to get out there and see if I can't track that thing down. I'd like to come along with you, if you don't mind. Well, Tony says you're a crack shot. Sure. By the way, did you teach your wife to ski like that? Like what? When did you ever see her ski? Well, she followed us clear out to the barn. I saw her up in the hills watching us. Then I guess she turned around and headed back. Mm-hmm. I wonder how she found out there was something going on. Well, sir, I was wondering the same thing till I found out she was a lady reporter. Yeah. My deputy figures that uh, she overheard him telling Mrs. Rill to send Tony out there, and I guess something in the way he said it must have tweaked her nose for news. Right. At any rate, uh, let's hope that by this time tomorrow night we'll have an end to this story for her. See my wife. Not since this afternoon. Oh, hey, wait. Excuse me, Mr. Seberg, but uh, I got to check that couple out. Uh, they, they'll walk right out without okay. paying. All right, I understand. Now, you saw my wife this afternoon. Did you see her come back? No.
You know you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? I'm proud of you. I'm sorry I let us drift so far apart. Well, we both kind of let that happen. I should have been there when you needed me all these years. You finally were. I was? Sure. If you hadn't gotten lost, I would never have had good enough reason to get back on my skis again. How was it? I stood on top of this mountain, looked down, and I saw myself instead of flying down, I was falling down, completely out of control. But once I got skiing, it was great. It was really great, Ellen. I should have told you a long time ago why I never skied after 68. I think it's because I saw too many champions become has-beens. I didn't want to be a has-been. So I figured that by not skiing anymore, I'd stay on top. But I didn't. Because things don't happen that way. They don't. I've been such a fool, Ellen. Oh, not a fool, my love. We're all afraid of failing. No. Not you. Oh, yes, me. I never knew that. I never showed you. Have you been keeping things from me? Will you kiss me? I thought you'd never ask. Did you say something? Let's go home, Gar. Do we have to? Come on. Are you sure you want to go home? Yeah.
check the barn, Cole. Tony? Wait a minute. Up there on the hill. Well, no, it's gone, but I saw it. I, I'm, I swear. We're gonna have to go back over the bridge and turn around to get over there. Deputy's up there looking for right now. I told the sheriff I was going to catch up with him. I uh, guess you two better get some sleep, huh? No. I'll go with you. <laughs> After the night you've been through? Sure. If I'm asleep when you come in, wake me up. We got it! The sheriff himself shot it right between the eyes. We're bringing it in. <laughs> I believe one of those things would be out in the wintertime. Yeah, I'm amazed. Well, there's some shot, huh? if I ask you a yes or no question? Well, that all depends. As a friend? Arthur. More as a time saver, though. Because if your answer is yes, there's no sense in us talking. Did you know you were killing the wrong thing? All I know for sure, Mr. Seberg, is that uh, something came charging out of that brush at me, and it wasn't human. Are you that sure that it was the wrong thing? Well, I don't know, but it seems to me that the best way to find out is to cut it open and see what's inside. Look, Sheriff, if the people of this town are in danger, don't you think it's your responsibility to warn them? Even if it means calling off the Winter Carnival? Look, Mrs. Seberg, uh, what is it that I'm going to warn the people against? Uh, a man-beast uh, legend whose very existence is uh, hotly disputed. Disputed by whom? Well, by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, for one. I wouldn't know this, but I talked to Washington this morning. And they said that they don't have one piece of evidence, nothing they've seen or heard that would stand up under scientific scrutiny, unquote. Now, is that what you want me to warn the people against? Can you honestly expect them to believe it? Uh, an unseasonal bear is one thing, but a legend is, uh, well, just that, a legend. Bigfoot has been sighted in the Northwest for the last 150 years. There are verified recordings of attacks, 
I had a man on my television show just recently who swears he threw a rock at one and it ran away. But I don't think what we've seen is Bigfoot. I don't think it's as simple as that. I agree. There have been enough happenings around here. All it takes is one person who doesn't believe it was a bear, and you'll have a stampede on your hands. That's just the point. I don't want these hills full of people shooting at each other. Now, you don't believe it was that bear, do you? No, it was not a bear. What do you think it was? I don't know. A mutant of some kind? Something left over from the last ice age? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's still out there. And it's a killer. What do you suggest we do? What you told my husband we should do in the first place. But this time, let's really do it. That's right. And you can count on me, Sharon. What you're saying is you, uh, you want us to go up there, just the two of us, and destroy this thing. That's right. Just the three of us. Just the four of us. Everybody ready? back for the camper.
knows where we're at. Maybe we ought to move camp. No, we're going to stay right here. Settle down and wait for him. Isn't that better than cruising around on the off chance that we might sight him? He's got a point. Well, we'll have to keep watch all night. Two at a time. I said the four of us, didn't I? You did. Look, you two go first. I'll make dinner. Tony? Okay, would you hold these things? a question that's been following me around for a long time? Yeah. Why did you decide against me? I didn't decide against you, Tony. I decided for Gar. I loved you both, you know. But he needed me. And I didn't. But it's okay, huh? You've just answered an eight-year-old question. Friends? Friends, always. It's our watch, gentlemen. I made some dinner. It's on the table for you. Right. Sounds great. chasing us anymore. It got what it wants. Well, he's no longer killing just to eat. That last attack wasn't mindless. That was a planned counterattack. We're not going to get very far walking. The barn's down here. Let's head for it. Hey, Tony. That's not a very good idea. Why not? Because that's where he's been stashing his food. Can you imagine us being there when he shows up? Now, it's already lost two from there. If he's as smart as you think he is, he won't come back to the barn again. Let's go.
County. Where are you going? There's three sets of skis and three rifles back up at that camper. Why don't you stay with Ellen? There's no sense in all of us risking our lives. Hold on. We decided we would stay together until this thing was over. Yeah. Remember? We're more vulnerable if we split up. Okay, let's go. New snow is just going to make everything more difficult for us. Yeah, but a lot easier for it. when the camper turned over. By the side of it. But the extra rifles were inside, weren't they? Yeah. Okay, now if I pull the logs out, will you? I Go in and get them. Tony, come out. anything. There's some skis. Oh, great. Throw them up. Okay. Hey, there should be a service revolver in the cab. <laughs> Ellen, look at the closet. The rivals may be there. Get the rifles, Alan, and the other skis. Okay. 